We are live. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Boy, we got a special show for you tonight. We've got some YouTubers in the house and some really cool van people. This is Neil and Britt. Neil and Britt, say howdy to the folks. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> we're going to go through our monologue, but we're going to keep them um, on screen. And we might ask Neil and Britt a few things as we go through this. We, we might get into their story as soon as possible tonight. We have a big group in here already, which is awesome. So let me kind of roll through uh, the program tonight. And uh, it's all about Neil and Britt's story. She's a traveling nurse. He's a sponsored athlete. They've been through four RVs. Neil and Britt, can you name those off really fast? <laughs> yeah, so I uh, Integra Ethos, Winnebago Travado, Storyteller, Overland, and now in the Winnebago Echo. Uh, that's so great. Some great <laughs> brands, right? Uh, so amazing. Yeah. Um, our Libation Live, we always like to do those. Tastes from the road. This is imported from Texas, Shiner Bach, which is a beer. And then Neil and Britt have chosen uh, Song of the Week as Daylight. So we'll tell you a little bit about that. We uh, just want to thank everybody for um, for joining us on the live and on the replay. My name is Scott. So welcome to, I guess I should do like this. I'm going to do like this. <laughs> my name is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. All about the compact RV. Everything from an Echo down to, I don't know, a Wingham or a Travato. Um, travel experience um neil and Britt, what is the name of your channel neil and Britt. <laughs> <laughs> i know it's very difficult very difficult it is super <laughs> ever gets my goofed up for some reason but uh, neil and Britt, there you are and um so we want to get into their their story as soon as possible here's a survey we put out i put out earlier today which rv would you prefer to travel in full-time kind of key word um We'll get your thoughts on this, Neil, a little bit later, but I was a little surprised by this, mm -hmm. given this audience, which is kind of van specific ish. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit more. But that's uh, hearing about their story tonight. So that's what this is all about. Uh, live QA, we love taking your questions. If you could help us out with your format by three stars, three question marks, that helps us find your question and get to it more readily. Again, I mentioned Libation Live. If you haven't had a Shiner Bach, you really don't know what you're missing. You ever tried Shiner Bach, Neil and Britt? I yeah. have. The Brittany That's hasn't. Not, <laughs> yeah, Brittany, not a big um, alcohol person. Uh, where am I coming at you from? I am coming at you from just outside Denver, Colorado. I'm on an airplane tomorrow. I'm literally in the Lazy Days uh, Furniture Galleries um, parking lot. Why? Because the Wi-Fi is really good here for the cellular connection. It's really crappy at my harvest hose up the hill, literally a mile and a half. So this stuff is just the, how it rolls. Um, that's where I am. Again, just outside of Denver jumping on an airplane to chicago tomorrow that'll be next week's what's up wednesday um it's pretty hot everywhere we kind of were talking about this before we went live and it's hotter in a lot of places in the country than florida right now which is kind of interesting and it's only june 1 tomorrow right that's yeah. kind of frightening <laughs> um gas in the area is reasonably priced um i'm happy to say it's about three bucks a gallon which is pretty juicy a pretty big spread though, about sixty cents. So shop with your gasoline for using the uh, gas buddy. Do you guys use gas buddy, Neil and Britt? We do. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, it's really smart. And then I'll zoom in here as you see, so make out some um, real estate prices. Uh, it's kind of reasonable-ish. You know, three hundred to seven hundred thousand. Um, so if you, it's really pretty here because you got you got all these yeah. mountains everywhere, which is really great. Uh, Going back to the city. And let's know where you're watching from. Again, just type in where you're watching from, what are your uh, location, weather, and fuel price, and that would be really great. A few more things. Uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos, because we got a lot coming out over the next few weeks, including me being in a storyteller for three days, two nights next week, and a rover van starting tomorrow. And neither of them really have a toilet, in my opinion. So this is going to be super interesting. Um, I have to give a huge shout out to Chris and Sandy for standing up our Facebook group. Um, if you want to chat amongst us all, this is where you want to go and, and do that. Um, a lot of you have created plans and go off travel on your own, uh, which is kind of great. Um, and you two are fairly active on this uh, Facebook group, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We try to. We try to post on there. Yeah. Post and communicate with everybody mm -hmm. as much as we can. You do a better job than me. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> We've got some really fun guests coming up. So again, next week I am doing a uh, What's Up Wednesday live from a storyteller. First time ever being a storyteller other than somebody else's for a few minutes or to, um, an RV part, or RV show. So literally, st uh, I got a really great course uh, that we're going to drive. 
Um, the following week, we've got Nick Schmidt. He's um, the GM at Sunshine State RVs. We love Nick. And then the week following that, we got another Nick, Nick Recchio. He's the GM of Forest Rivers B Band Division uh, of Coachman RV. So Coachman makes the uh, the bit beyond the Galleria and the Nova. So you don't want to miss that. And then in a, about a month, we've got Steve Hood, one of our audience friends, that's going to share his story. Neil and Britt. Uh, he's in a Travado. He did 25 national parks in 60 days. Ooh. That's impressive. I, can, I can't even get out of a state in 60 days. So I don't know how in the world you, <laughs> you do that. That's pretty crazy. And then we got a bunch of uh, in person uh, stuff coming up later in the year. We do want to talk about this event. This is where I'm going to be this weekend, uh, the Embassy RV event. Um, if you want information on that, go to embassyrv.com. Uh, we're going to be doing a YouTube live from that. And uh, yeah, reach out to them because I'm not sure the status of space availability. I do know that this is the Vantopia, Florida event. Um, it's in February 2024. Seems like years away. It's not that far, weirdly. And I'm told by the team there at Van Life Outfitters, who's a producer, they've almost sold out our three rows. So the Go Small, Live Large uh, group is uh, we're on a near sellout. So if you want to get go to this, uh, Neil and Britt, are you going to this? We yep. already got our ticket. Got We're our going. Ticket. <laughs> Tickets. That's so great because it's it's going to be sold out for our three rows. Um, they have a lot of space available, but you just wouldn't be camping with us. So if you want to camp with us, uh, get your tickets ASAP. And that's the uh, URL, vantopia.co. That's where you want to go. All right. With that, let's talk about um, Neil and Britt. Then we'll say, some hi, uh, say hi to some folks um, in a few minutes. So, again, just a delight to have you here. It's just really an honor to have you on the program. We've known each other for a couple of years, but we've just spent some time together the last few days, which is pretty, pretty crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So maybe just give a, so this is kind of what we want to cover with uh, Neil and Britt. So just kind of some expectations. So, so careers and dreams around travel, the dream part, and then how do you fold a career into the travel? Uh, Airbnb, you have kind of a very interesting approach. Um, a part of your story about being in an Airbnb, and then how did that flip to van life? And then the four RVs you've been in, and then you got some really good advice for folks. So maybe just give us a little um, intro on, on yourselves, and and uh, that would be super great for you to do yeah. that. <laughs> well, I'm Neil. That's Brett. Uh, <laughs> originally from upstate New York. Brittany is from a smaller town in Vermont by Burlington. Uh, so, yeah, uh, growing up pretty much in the country, uh, the real upstate. <laughs> And same thing for Brittany. Uh, I guess you can kind of talk a little bit about uh, where you kind of went into the idea of traveling. You can start there. Well, when I was 13 or 14, I was reading a book with something called Candy Stripers in it, which I thought was interesting. So anybody who doesn't know what that is, it's volunteers in a hospital. And I was like, huh, that sounds pretty interesting. So I actually went and volunteered at the University of Vermont Medical Center. Um, and that's kind of where I fell in love with watching what everybody was doing there and the nurses and the doctors. And it was from then on that I was like, I'm going to be a nurse. That is what I'm doing. I want to help people. Um, and I never veered away from that concept at all. A seed was planted. Yep. So awesome. Yeah. Um, now, where did we meet? So we met you, I bumped into you where? It was the floor, the Tampa RV show, the Florida RV super show uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Did I recognize you or did you recognize me? You guys recognize uh, we recognized you. You had your lovely cowboy hat on. Yeah, <laughs> we could see you from a distance, and uh, we ha actually had just started YouTube then. Mm -hmm. And that was for uh, making the dinero, or just kind of sharing with friends and family. Uh, friends and family. Yeah. I mean, we always the idea of maybe if you could make a few dollars, it'd be nice to help with the travels, but. It was really just to share with friends and family mostly. Yeah, that's so great. Um, I remember what you walk around through camera. I had a very different camera approach, so that was cool. Um, Brittany, can kind I of share a little bit about your career? You mentioned wanting to be a nurse. What was that like? And then we'll ask Neil some questions about that. But uh, and how did travel fit into your nurse career path? Well. I, so like I said, I always knew I wanted to be a nurse, and I remember sitting in my very first class, I was 17 years old, in college, 
And I was like, I'm going to be a travel nurse. I want to see the United States. I want to see other places. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And I stuck with it that whole time. So I went straight out of high school, right into college, um, got my bachelor's degree after four years. And then I didn't meet Neil until about another year later. And uh, we, we don't have one of those fancy, cute little love stories, but we did meet on a dating app called Plenty of Fish, which is just <laughs> cringy status right there. <laughs> and, Plenty of fish. If you don't catch the one you want, you keep fishing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was I remember it was free and everything back then. So I don't know what they're like nowadays, but that that's how we met was a dating app. So we can say we had a su success story from that anyways that is so <laughs> funny um neil tell me uh, tell us a little bit about your careers and we got you shared this picture with us uh i'm pretty sure all of your biceps are bigger than my leg uh, <laughs> in this but how'd you get into bodybuilding and, and kind of a, a sponsored athlete situation and then let's talk yeah. about your brother next but then as, as okay. an ignite. yeah uh so for me i went to college i just got an associate's degree i originally was going for uh criminal justice but I switched to business because I realized I was already managing companies while I was in college. So it just, for me, was useless to continue on because in that field, you pretty much just need to have the experience to work your way up. Uh, so I worked in a couple of various industries after that. Um, most people probably have heard of Sky Zone Trampoline Parks. So I ended up uh, operations manager for one of their locations and then went out to California and did you know some stuff with the corporate and bounce back and forth and uh, worked for a tribe as a director of sales and marketing. And eventually um, when I met uh, Britt, I was, let's see, <laughs> I was working in the fuel uh, business, the fuel oil business, um, and then got into the beverage distribution business all as operations manager. So pretty interesting. <laughs> and you had a lot of travel nomad in, um, DNA, but it just kind of put yep. those on hold um, when you chased a, a kind of like traditional career, I would say, right? Um, yeah. And I just want to thank you in advance of kind of sharing this. So we had um, Terry Halstrom on um, a few weeks ago, What's Up Wednesday, and his story really was um, part of the catalyst for him getting in a van and getting moving on his dreams was the death of his father. And you had kind of a similar situation here with your brother. Share that a little bit and then how that create that, that cause and effect around your travel dreams yeah so um like i was explaining i went into the corporate career for like a you know chasing the dollar type situation uh but previous to that uh when we were younger my brother and i my brother kyle i would say uh i think i was 14 or 15 so my brother is just he was three years younger than me um four depending on the time of the year but uh we uh, saw like uh, tiny houses and, you know, things like that on a TV show. And we both kind of were like, this is amazing. And my family were huge campers. We camped every summer. My grandparents basically lived at a campground five months out of the year. So it was kind of in our DNA. But then once we saw the tiny, because they always had big like fifth wheels and things like that. When we saw these tiny houses on wheels, and then we started to like see the van thing start to come up kind of and it was back then it was kind of like a uh, they like hipsy hippie gypsies like you know and stuff so like they kind of had a the van life thing kind of had a bad reputation uh but we just fell in love with it instantly so we always talked about him and i hey let's build out a couple vans we could travel the country you know go to california because we'd never been to the west coast at that time so that was kind of our dream drive from new york to california and just along the way if we you know ran out of money we'd figure out something we'd go work on a orchard or something you know it was kind of the plan we were making of gypsies <laughs> you know, we kind of just thought that but then it just kind of led into the corporate career and then um it was 2015 I'm trying to do my math here uh my brother was 23 years old and he um kind of got in a bad place in life he was a really good chef he was working as a rest at a restaurant as a chef and um, then he is also he was a workaholic and then he was also um, uh, assistant manager at another business and he ended up uh, getting a really bad cut on his hand and had tons of stitches got we had to go down uh, he got actually took the ambulance down to uh, 
Boston. They had to get him into surgery. It was just really bad. Uh, and he could never use his hand again. And he just, it was a couple fingers on that hand he couldn't use. And he kind of just figured, oh, my chef career is done. And he got into this really bad place mentally. Uh, got Started hanging with the wrong people. All his good friends from high school and college, they all kind of left and moved across the country. So he got in this group of bad people and he, he uh, started, got pretty heavy into drug use. Uh, but then, as I was saying, 23 years old, he ended up actually having an overdose after he was sober for a year. Uh, kind of that, I guess, that typical mindset by a lot of people that have been addicts uh, and got clean. If they end up having a relapse, they think they can use the same amount and he OD'd. Um, I was living in Oklahoma at the time, so I had to fly back and go through that whole process. And, uh, you know, is obviously sucks and I wish he was here, but it was kind of the I guess the catalyst that got me thinking again, like what do, what should I be doing that would make him proud type of situation. So I had taken a few years off to of lifting weights and stuff. So I got back into that because he was actually my training partner. Mm -hmm. um, so I got back into that. That was kind of the start of getting things rolling. Um, and then I, you know, went, went back to Oklahoma and then came back to New York and then kind of led to meeting Brittany. And then what she said on our first date, I guess kind of, really kicked into what was in the back of my brain that I needed to make him proud by getting on the road. <laughs> and we'll, we'll have you share that in just a second. I call him yeah. um, Van Lake Miracles. And again, it's funny how, again, cause and effect, a cause creates an effect, assuming you're open to it mm -hmm. and can respond to it. And it's probably one of my greatest learnings from Van Life is, again, I call him Van Life Miracles. So kind of walk through your story, something about a ferry ride. And Britt, what was your um, uh, mandate? <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> yeah, so on our first date, so Neil was in New York and I was in Vermont. And anyone who hasn't been to that area, it's separated by Lake Champlain. So in a couple spots, but really now just the one ferry, I think now, um, you can ride across and get to the other side. So Neil came over from New York to Vermont for our first date and we were sitting at the restaurant and i told him specifically just so you know i'm going to be a travel nurse so if you're not cool with that then this is not going to work out for us <laughs> get on board or the train's leaving you're not there <laughs> and it, it so just happened to work out yeah i mean that was a hundred percent you know right? it was in the back of my head to travel and mm -hmm. it, i don't know higher power stepped in <laughs> so tell us yeah for sure destiny and van life miracles however you want to quantify it it's it's so real and so true again assuming you're open for it and are looking for it kind of expecting it really right um yeah. that's been my experience anyway so um just thanks for sharing that so 2018 um you got your first traveling nurse contract i knew you were kind of a competitive athlete so maybe share a little bit about that and you know, Brittany, your situation to generate some some dollars was kind of obvious, right? Um, but Neil, mm -hmm. yours was now kind of remote. So maybe just share a little bit about how that, because a lot of people would like to do what we do, but they don't have, um, they have a job that maybe ties them down. So maybe just share a little bit of that. And they're going to maybe take a few questions here before we get into the vans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, getting into it is pretty simple. Um, there's many, many companies out there where you can get a nurse job. Um, and it's not just nursing. There's a lot of different specialties that you can go out and travel around to different hospitals. Um, so I just picked a company. We found a contract in good old Pensacola, Florida. And um, we pretty much put in our 30 day notice on our condo. We packed everything up, had a garage sale, and we drove down there. Yeah, yeah there was Friday. Yep. And at the time, I was managing a, a alcoholic beverage uh, distribution company, um, and I was working overnights. And so I get home Friday, and that was kind of my shorter day. Uh, it's where I'd actually get to be home at night and watch a movie or something. And uh, she just kind of looked at me and was like, yeah, I'm ready to travel nurse. So you, you're going to have to put in your notice at work. And so for me, it was kind of like, oh, crap, uh, what am I going to do for money now? And I had been back into lifting for a few years and uh, knew because of the competitive bodybuilding my early years, there's money in it. And I was sponsored back then. Uh, so I knew, you know, I could just kind of maybe start putting my feelers out for that and uh, see what happens. 
and it just happened to be that I had a, a friend that was a, a manager at a gym and this guy that owned a very big supplement company, uh, pretty famous, was going in there and just had moved to the area working out and he had showed him videos of me working out and doing some pretty heavy lifts and it impressed him. So uh, we just, uh, he reached out to me via email. It was actually originally on a call because I was FaceTiming with my buddy. Uh, so he said hi and then an email and then uh, just kind of from there led to me getting a sponsorship and, and making money via that way, which is basically like marketing and sales in a way um, to promoting the supplements is, is the best way to put it. Um, but in the meantime, before that actually came through, I was doing Amazon. Uh, I was an Amazon seller, um, fulfilled by Amazon. So I'd go around to like all these different stores and buy up stuff and sell it via Amazon. So I did that for probably about a year. Yeah. And then the, the sponsored athlete came into the picture about that year point. So I was able to transition luckily into that to make money. Yeah, that's super great. And you were able to pull some of your corporate skills forward um, into your new situation probably, right? Yeah, definitely. Which was you know stuff I've done too, which has been uh, really great. Uh, we got some questions coming in. Let's take a few questions. Then we're going to talk about your first van purchase. And uh, I just love uh, these uh, strong traveling nurse women because we know another one, uh, Sandy, um, yep. as Chris. Uh, so it's, it's just fascinating how... Um, how y'all work it out. I'm very impressed. Um, my other half would be like, nope, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. So here's Sharon in the house. Uh, 84 degrees in Ohio. That's actually warmer than Florida. We got Travel Dreamer in the house. You might recognize some of these names. Here's Roads of Life getting over some uh, illness. That's not fun at all. Glad you're getting over it, sir. Uh, here's New York Ron in the house. Uh, great to 82 in New York. That's pretty crazy. Hey, you guys know this guy? Oh, huh. <laughs> Looks familiar. <laughs> he's Justin. He's uh, the uh, Starlink internet uh, mooch. <laughs> <laughs> we all were for a few days. You'll see that picture in a minute. Poncho Springs, Colorado. Or is that? Uh, I'm not sure where that is. Um, it's kind of pleasant here. It's much cooler. Um, Roads of Life. So here's Marie. We were just hanging out all together the last few days. So uh, reporting for Wu uh, from Taos, New Mexico. Taos was 53 in Taos. Ooh, that's wow. Cool. wow. That changed. <laughs> change <laughs> um we kind of just answered this um neil and Britt, but if uh so roads of life wants to know how do you get work while traveling so uh, working for staffing agency or independent uh, maybe yeah so, so um neil brings me to work yeah. so we we're work for a staffing agency. yeah i work for a staffing agency um <laughs> so that I'm never independent. It's always through an agency. It's never for the hospital specifically. Um, but when I'm when I'm actually working, Neil's always driving me and picking me up from work. So he's like my personal chauffeur. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> chauffeur, chef, van maintenance. Uh, it's it's everything. Right? It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. it's, it's so cool, great to have your uh, a relationship like that. Let's see. We got Gary in the house. Uh, Orland Park, 89 in Orland Park. Oh, my God. That's just outside of Chicago. Um, we got John in the house uh, at Finger Lakes. Well, that's really warm everywhere. Uh, Roads of Life has another question here. What happens when one of you gets sick? How does the other manage not to also get sick? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, uh, we don't get sick. Yeah, we don't really get sick that much. Um, the only time we've been sick in the last, well, basically since you started was covid yeah. Yeah. And I never tested positive. So <laughs> I guess Brittany just got it and I had a bad flu or something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's the only time in five years, five plus years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't get sick either. I think it's all the germs we're exposed to being traveling around every place. We just our immune systems are probably like two miles thick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and you working in a hospital environment. There's no germs in hospitals, right? Oh, yeah. None. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the baby business. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We got CMG in the house. Great to have you. Uh, uh, Denim's in the house. This is great. Uh, oh, Rob. This is, we love Rob. In Minneapolis. 93 in Minneapolis? Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, we got Kim in the house. Fort Worth. Love Fort Worth. Have you guys been to Fort Worth? We have mm -hmm. just Already? driven through. Yeah. Because we get stressed out in the area it's driving. The cities. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we need to make it a, a, a plan to go there yeah. and spend, you know, like, you know, four or five days and actually kind of see the area. Yeah, we need to do like a Vambury in the stockyards. There's plenty of room. Let's not do it on a weekend per se, because we know those can get super busy during season. But uh, it's, 
you will love it. Get your cowboy hat on and <laughs> off we go. Um, here's Vienna, uh, Ohio, South Vienna, Ohio. There's Alfred in the house. I know a little bit. We know Alfred. <laughs> he's so great. Um, we got Rich Kurtz in the house, 91. So he's just outside of Chicago. Um, denim, uh, yeah, I got a fresh haircut today. I have like no hair yeah. left. Uh, none of my hats fit, actually. Um, not sure if you've ever been to um, you know, a hair cut person. And the more they talk, the more they cut. And we were having a nice chat. The next thing I know, I'm like, I have no hair left. I'm like, that's enough. We forget we got it. <laughs> Leave some hair on top, please. So thank you for noticing. I got a fresh haircut. Holy cow. <laughs> um, let's see. Josh is in the house. So he's with the Van Life Outfitters. So uh, we we're talking toilets four minutes already. <laughs> that's kind of the RV thing. How long do you talk before you talk toilets? Um, Denim Rue wants to know, if Neil and Britt, are you still planning to go uh, to Canada? Yes. We just don't know when yet. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time in Canada when we were young because we grew, both grew up on the border, but we want to go to British Columbia mm -hmm. and Alaska. So that's going to be a full trip, full video series, maybe next, next summer. Next summer. Is the, is the goal. Yeah. I'd love to get there um, as well. I've never been in the van. And uh, they may not let me in with my collection of libations, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jack's in the house. Uh, let's say hi to Gene real fast. Hey, Gene. Good to see you. And Jack's in the house. Uh, if you enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend, best camping time of the year, uh, assuming you can find an empty campsite, be mindful of those who gave our freedom. Yes, it's one of those unsung um, holidays that need to be pumped up more. Um, hi, Josh. How's doing well, sir? And uh, we gave everybody a heads up that the uh, Go Small Live Large tribe at uh, streets, three streets, right? At um, Antobia, Florida, February 2024 is almost sold out. Lots of more space. Well, you have to like commute to where all the action is, I guess. <laughs> Come hang out with us. Um, so let's get a question here. So this is Beaming Life. This is from Australia. 12 Celsius. Somebody give us the temperature. I have no idea what 12 Celsius. I know uh, zero, oh, it freezes, yeah, but I have no clue. Now, are you supposed to be on the metric system there, Miss Brittany? Uh, it depends on which hospital I work at. So sometimes really? I do Fahrenheit and sometimes I do Celsius. It gets very confusing. I don't oh, like yeah. it. I don't like it. <laughs> Well, hi, Beaming Life from Australia. Uh, do you do the 24-hour clock, like military time? Like oh, yeah. 200? Yeah, you yep. do that. So that's, that's pretty legit. Um, let's uh, take Gary's question here. Let's get into your vans. I think you got a really cool RV story. So Gary wants to know, what is the percentage breakdown where you stay and which do you prefer? Uh, campgrounds, Harvest Hill State Parks, or Cracker Barrels? Mm. Mm. So that's going to depend if we're on a contract for me. If we are on a contract when I'm working, we do need to be at a campground. Um, that's because we have to duplicate expenses. That's a whole nother ordeal in travel nursing. Um, when we're not on a contract, though, we do a good percentage of each of those. Yeah, I'd say. But I'd, I'd say no campgrounds. Yeah, no campgrounds when, when you're not on an assignment. Yep. and. Harvest House is probably our number one. Mm -hmm. uh, we really like the experience and we like supporting small businesses. So it just to us stands out and it's convenient because usually you can be in a, a small city or if you want, you can be in a big city. Uh, so it gives us that flexibility. But uh, yeah, state parks we're actually just kind of doing for the first time now that we're, we're in New Mexico again. Mm -hmm. And there's some great, I, I really like state parks because they're usually really well maintained. They're not overrun with people. They're really cool places. And some are really near urban environments. Uh, if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, there's Cedar Hill State Park, which is a spectacular spe uh, state mm -hmm. park. So, and they're cheap generally. Uh, that's a good segue. So, tell us when you kind of start doing the traveling nursing, you were in Airbnbs for a while, yeah. and that got a little laborious, um, which kind of got you thinking about the van thing. We're going to talk about your, your first van here in a second, but tell us about the Airbnb and how you made that flip to RV. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, every time we had to go to a new assignment, you had to pack up the car, drive there with a cat as well and a litter box, get there, unpack, and then when you're done the assignment, pack up again, and, drive to the next place. And find an Airbnb and find it. that yeah. would allow the cat yep. or a rental that was furnished and it would allow the cat and just the overall expense we were just wasting money mm -hmm. when we could be in a van 
paying a lot less for a van versus Airbnbs. And not have to unpack and repack multiple times a year. <laughs> yeah, that would get kind of interesting. So tell us how you got going on on the van thing. What vans did you look at first? This is the Integra Ethos. Uh, what floor plan would we be familiar with inside of this? Well, the Integra Ethos is like the, the Travato K. Uh, so it's that same exact twin beds set up with the bathroom in the back. Uh, for us, it was actually watching your videos <laughs> and uh, Kevin's there at 30 and a wake up when he was in a, a Travato. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we actually knew we wanted a Travato, but Brittany, like I'm kind of a person that I know what I want and I can kind of just go with it and I know I'm going to be happy. Brittany's a little bit more <laughs> financially uh, conscious <laughs> and she's like, maybe we should go with the cheaper rig and make sure this is actually going to work out. And quickly found out we really needed the uh a lithium system and yep. we wanted we wanted volta uh and then we discovered also we didn't like the setup either mm -hmm. interesting interesting and so then you um traded the uh, ethos in for a winnebago travado which floor plan did you choose here so we have the g we have GL. So it's a gl all right so i had volta pure three lithium system in it um was that a game changer just from a freedom standpoint yeah because that when we got the Integra Ethos, Brittany was actually on a uh, COVID testing assignment in the St. Petersburg, Florida area. Mm -hmm. And even though it was it was winter, uh, you know, coming out of winter, so it was cooler, <laughs> like, but it was still getting warm. And there was days that it would reach in the 90s. And uh, I was just I didn't want to run a generator in a city while I was waiting for her to just she would work in days then. And I was like, I don't want to run a generator uh, to kick on the AC. So, you know, it kind of just led to that, that path to make sure we have Volta or a robust lithium system. That is so great. Um, now, this is kind of a little bit of a twist in your story. Um, so you have the Travato, no more ethos. Uh, but then you decide to get a Storyteller Overland, very much an off-grid adventure wagon kind of. Which mode did you have? They're, they have like normal... Um, stealth yep. from the beast which one did you have so we had the classic yeah. uh, classic because at the time you couldn't really find any anywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> or when you could they were like 200k i really were not paying that <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> for a rig so uh so that was out of the question so we actually got it used uh from an individual in florida and it just worked out great price but it was really just because of the bed like we needed to keep volta but we wanted a bigger bed it was really what the thing the idea was with the storyteller interesting um and what were you doing with your travado at that point when you had your storyteller yeah so i mean yeah i mean because essentially right after we got our storyteller um we ended up deciding well we don't want to get rid of it yet because it really is kind of important to us yes. it's kind of sentimental in a sense because we spent a whole year in our travado um so we decided to start renting it out um to other people so that they could experience van life and a lot of people like to try out a van before they go and spend the big bucks to buy one um so we put it on outdoorsy and rv share um and we've been renting it out ever since now so it's been almost a year that yeah. we've been that we've been renting it out and it's been honestly really great for the most part that's so awesome i'm so so happy to hear that um and then at what point did you decide the storyteller i love your instagram picture here by the way i think every storyteller <laughs> person has i tried this on my travado i about fell off the van <laughs> so i'm really a height sensitive the pretty guys, nice on that. i'm just like ah, i freeze <laughs> up so congratulations um but you guys have a real deck up there which is one reason the storyteller is so awesome which we'll find out next week. I'm going to be in one for three days, two nights. Um, <laughs> but then you kind of switch to to this model, which is a very different rig from a Travado and from a Storyteller. So what was the big switch? You were renting out your, your Travado. That was going well. But what was kind of the big switch from this to this? Okay. Yeah, so because we got a great deal on the Storyteller, uh, we knew no matter what, like within a year, we'd make our money plus back. So that was kind of like in the back of our head. Um, because it was almost instantly that we knew we made a wrong choice with the storyteller. Uh, 
Brittany, last summer, Brittany went through having thyroid cancer and had to get her thyroid removed. So we were stationary in Florida mm -hmm. for uh, about three, four months. Yeah. So we were only going out on some weekend trips with the storyteller. But then when she uh, finished, got through that and beat that, and we got in it, it was about two weeks in, we realized, like, this is not going to work out for us. We're on our way out to Oregon. Uh, and we just really like to Dago. Uh, their customer service has always been great to us. So we knew we probably wanted to get back into a Winnebago or do a custom build. But then we kind of, I guess for two years, pretty much actually when we met you, Scott, we had seen the Echo and fell in love with it. We said, this is actually the perfect rig for a couple of full time with some animals. Uh, and especially with the idea of, you know, in the future, maybe a kid. So it was, it was just there back of our head. Uh, and then we knew that we could make money in the storyteller. So I just started going down to hunt uh, to find one. And we didn't like the toilet situation. Yes, that, that was a big <laughs> thing. The... Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You went from kind of no toilet to OMG, that transformer bathroom, right? I mean, you yeah. guys have to be like in seventh heaven. Uh, so funny. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I'm, I'm Even this weekend, I'm in a rover van that has no toilet either, so I'm already a nervous wreck because of this. Um, are you, and you're happy with the Echo? Very we, happy. Yeah, we're extremely happy because it's the best of both worlds for us. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's like the Turvado, but just a little bit bigger. And it has on-demand hot water, which is a pretty cool bonus. It was actually something that Brittany basically made as a demand <laughs> because the storyteller had it and it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. But we were just like, we need a bathroom on demand, hot water, big bed. And this has the two twins that convert to the King. So it just fit every category. We knew it in the back of our head for two years, but we weren't going to get a first year model again. We made that mistake with the ethos. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wanted to just let them work the kinks out. And then we just happened to get lucky and came across one for sale pretty close to us in Oregon. That is so great. It is a compelling rig for a lot of reasons. It's just that little bit more space, but it's not a mm -hmm. much significantly larger footprint like a traditional Class C or even a B plus, like a leisure travel van. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, let me just flash the picture again. Uh, see if you. What mods have you made or plan to make, if any? Well, we've done a lot. yeah, uh, we've done a lot of interior mods, uh, mostly on the interior. We've uh, kind of changed it to make it more homey. Mm -hmm. um, We've done like refacing the cupboards that you could see up in the corner here. Uh, so we did those blue because we originally wanted the uh, the verdes or the green color uh, that they had. But at the time, we didn't have an option because this was the only story or this was the only echo I could find in the whole country. So we just went for it. And we're like, we can just make it our own. So we made those blue. You can see the backsplash behind Neil. That oh, wasn't yeah. there. Yeah, right. uh, we That's put a projector good. screen in the back. We've done a lot of different things. Put up some shelves in the cabinets. Um, yeah. Just honestly, making it a little bit better. Yeah, more more homey yeah. or or our own kind of yeah. like what you did with your better Travada. for us. Yeah. yeah, including your sign. In case you forget yeah. who it yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> How about those seat covers? Those look. Uh, was that standard? Your seat color? Covers? No. No. We just got some Walmart special, and uh, we have two cats in here, so we have to worry about the uh, the seats getting destroyed by the cats. Yeah. And and I, since we live in New Mexico, oh, they're so cute. <laughs> we got the southwest southwest design. Oh yeah, we love sure. we just love New Mexico. Lived here for a few years, so that was actually my requirement when she said seat covers. I said I need some New Mexico <laughs> mm -hmm. southwest design. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they can change them as you roll around. If you get in the Pacific Northwest, you get Sasquatch, and they go over to Vermont, yep. you get lobsters, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> tell us about your cat experience. I had my cat with me for about a little less than two years. Um, loved Van Life Luke to death. Um, unfortunately, he died. But um, you've got very two uh, two very different cats. And uh, uh, just any any uh, any Van Cat stories or advice? Well, questions. <laughs> Expect the horn is going to get honked at any time of the day or night. It is going to happen. And it's happened in the middle of the night. <laughs> yep. it, it didn't happen when we just had Muna, our old cat. Yep. But once we got Bjorn, the little black cat, being a kitten, he's made her active. And they just run back and forth mm -hmm. 
all times, you know, it'd be usually afternoon and then about 10 p.m. at night to 11. He just goes crazy chasing her and it's just horns galore. So. <laughs> Have you have you gotten locked? Uh, have you gotten locked out yet? No, because no. that's the one good thing about the Echo. You have that side door that has separate keys, and being on the Ford Transit chassis, they have a Ford Pass app that I can unlock and lock. So we have some backups like in place just mm -hmm. in case. But it is a fear. <laughs> yeah, it's always a yeah. fear. I got locked out from uh, Van Life Luke once at a Harvest Hose. Uh, it was. <laughs> It was not fun. He thought it was cool. <laughs> That's how you learn the lesson. You take your keys with you if you don't have a plan B or C. Um, let's take some questions and comments. We're talking about travel. You've uh, done some really crazy travel stuff. Uh, I'm looking off screen to get this teed up. But then we will get some advice from you because you um, there's a lot of folks, again, that want to do what you do, work from the road, travel nursing. We know and love Chris and Sandy. They um, have done that. So um, here's um, Hi, Mary Mom. saying hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't you just love your mother's support i just, it's just it's i love sad. it i know i have supporting parents it's really important um i still can't believe i'm still doing this that's uh, that's how they support me you're still doing this when are you coming to visit i know i'm getting there hold on uh see roads alive guys vantopia tickets will be in the mc location congratulations Ooh. somebody's having a birthday Ooh, happy uh, birthday i know that's cool happy birthday robert is that roads of life um, Steve Hood would, would have hit all parks in lower 48 if the stock market didn't tank. So he's going to be our guest in about um, middle middle July. And then Roads of Life is going to be on sharing his story in August. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, it's insane. Um, Marie's got her tickets. So this is going to be a fun February for sure. Um, let's see. <laughs> it helps to have the best wife ever. Um, <laughs> and you guys get along really well too. Any, any parent or parental? That comes later. Um, marital advice in living in small space with two rambunctious cats. Uh, yeah, I, it. I guess it just takes the right personality. I mean, yeah, you know, because it's, it's even though we're in an echo, it's still tight for two people full time. So it's just, uh, I don't know. Learn to if you need to go hike a trail or take some walks. Or <laughs> You've still got to have your own time to do things and. You are going to argue about things, but it's going to be really stupid. It's going to be about food, and it's going to be about directions. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got into navigation. You don't have to argue, but I just follow the, the navigation. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, who drives? Britt, do you drive or you share? I have oh. never driven the Echo. No way. That's so great. So you, na you navigate. So, so yeah. he's not following your directions. No, I mean... <laughs> I get, I'll give credit to, to Justin. Justin told me to start using Apple Maps again. Uh, and now that I have, better. it's usually the turns that cause mm -hmm. the issues. Because, you know, if you got two turn lanes, yeah. Google doesn't tell you which turn lane to be in most of the time. Apple's on par with that. So I've got to give credit to them on that now. So there actually may be not as many of those disagreements. Discussions. <laughs> <laughs> That is funny. Uh, here's Trevor, uh, Neil and Brett saying, hey, I think we met in Roswell two years ago. Ooh, That's interesting. That. Um, Being on YouTube, man. we get noticed a lot, right? Which is kind Tell of cool. Tell us more, Trevor. Oh, I wonder if it was Trevor was the couple. There was a couple we did meet there that were on the road traveling. Very nice couple. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. very cool. Um, we're going to do Libation Live here in just a minute, but we want to get... Uh, uh, let's see. Mason Mike's in the house. This is great. Um your travel dreamer wants to know, since you've been on the ferry, did you see Champ? Oh, Champ. Champy. <laughs> Champ. Good old Champ. I just, I, I don't know. I think he's kind of fake at this point, but I'd like to think he's real. <laughs> he's like the Loch Ness Monster. It's, it's the Northeast version of the Loch Ness Monster. Yep. This is great. Um, wow, we're at 44 minutes already. This is one fast. Um, hi, Scott. Uh, from Rang from South Florida. UPS delivered giant box and containing rubber vans. Lighter, lighter tire for your ProMaster based on your recommendation. No more travel without a spare. And God forbid you get rear-ended uh, in your van, sir. It will probably save your van like it saved mine. Uh, mm -hmm. So good, good job, sir. Uh, I'm going to see you, Peter, tomorrow. I'm pretty excited. Uh, here's Justin. Uh, when caravanning with a group of friends, one has stay, one has outstayed their welcome, tagging along with you. How do you get rid of them in a friendly manner? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> I can answer that for you, Neil. That's called turn off Starlink. 
that, that's true. That'll get him away really fast. <laughs> <laughs> that friend, right? That friend. <laughs> yeah. uh, that is funny. Um, we love Justin. Let's see. Uh, let's have a let's see a few more in here. Um, uh, so Roads Alive did the uh, conversion for us. So fifty four equals twenty three Celsius. Thank you for that. He's always the um, the brainiac. Let's see. Uh, so Marie's saying uh, Vembry uh, on the other side of the board to bring down libation. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> let's just put the bottles out and uh, thin thin the group. Um, of bottles. So Josh uh, from Van Life Outfitters, can you please tell us what duplicating expenses mean for the nursing contract? Good question. And while you answer that, I'm going to get my libation live ready. Yeah. So when you're a travel nurse, you get a tax-free stipend. Um, so because of that, you need to be duplicating expenses in the sense of you need a tax home that you need to be either, you know, paying a mortgage or paying rent and then you also need to be paying for something, whether it's an Airbnb, a campground, where you are at your contract. So if you are not duplicating expenses and then you get audited by the government, that is not good for anybody. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because of that tax free business that travel nurses deal with, um, that's that's kind of what the duplicating expenses is. So it's. It's pretty easy, but yeah. You just have a campground for 13 weeks. Mm -hmm. That's your contract. Easy as that. That's so great. Um, let's see, a few more questions, but let's do a uh, libation live because uh, it's that time of day. <laughs> so, are you libating at all, uh, Neil? Yeah. And are we hydrating? We have two Towns Cider House, a prickly paradise cider. Ooh. You like ciders, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, we're big fans of ciders. Yeah, yeah. So this is Schneiderbach, which is really hard to find in the can. So I, I discovered uh, like Total Wine has that. So I just love this. So everything tastes better in a Lukenbach, Texas glass. So cheers, everybody. Thank you, Neil and Britt, for being on tonight. Really cheers. do appreciate that. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully, you all um, started before we did. Uh, let's talk about your travel a little bit and then. Um, because you guys have been to some crazy places. Um, and I think as much as, you know, everybody gets really excited about the van, the rig, but it's really the travel and the people and the experiences that come from that, I think, is is the big thing. Would you agree, disagree? 100% agree. agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so you sent some of these pictures. So this one, um, maybe just tell us where you are here. Redwood State Park. Where is that? California, I'm guessing. That is Northern California. Yeah, our, uh, this is our most recent uh, West Coast uh, assignment for Brittany. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of exploring, and that was a bucket list, bucket list location that we had to see. Yep, those trees are amazing. Just the, the giant sequoia, that whole thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, are those amazing? I was there once, I'm not in the van, but that was extremely cool. Um, I want to know how the elephants treated your van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, what we try to do is because you can actually save a decent amount of money in van life. That's one thing if you're doing it right. Um, you know, it just depends on how you how you live and your lifestyle. But we try to uh, make sure we incorporate at least once a year, get away from the van and do international travel. So this was actually uh, a trip to Thailand uh, where we got to uh, go to Elephant Sanctuary. Uh, mm. and it was just a great experience. But we try to do that every year at least once sometimes twice uh this year is hawaii we're gonna be going to hawaii for a few weeks a couple doing some island hopping uh with family and friends so it's uh just i feel like it's an important part uh for our lives because we mm -hmm. just enjoy travel and seeing everything yeah and international travel is super cool but um i think one thing i've discovered is there's so many cool things in the u.s right i mean well international Very is amazing so. it's yep. so many cool things um what are we looking at here yeah, so we're at, um, tech, was that Universal Studios in California? Yeah, I couldn't, re I couldn't remember, but I know it's Hogwarts. So wherever yeah, that so is. we're in Hogwarts with our butter beer there. And uh, <laughs> then on the other side, we're, we're at the gate of Area 51 because you have to go there <laughs> and see if you see anything happening or going on. So um, 
completely different experiences that you can have just in the United States in general. You go from, you know, um, an amusement park over to a dirt road that goes on for eight miles before you get to this little gate that you can't really do anything but take a picture from it. So, <laughs> And if you step through the gate, they're, they're authorized with deadly force. It probably yep. says that. Right, right? <laughs> so take that seriously. And all the way down to kind of find some van friends and hanging out. Uh, where was this taken? <laughs> I know they're all in the in the group here right now. So it was so much fun hanging out with everybody so the last was, few days. This was along the Rio Grande yep. at Arroyo Hondo Campground. So we definitely recommend if you're visiting New Mexico, go along that road and there's you'll find a camp spot because there's about five official campgrounds and they range from five dollars to fifteen dollars a night whatever you need so it's it's kind of like uh, heaven on earth down there really especially if you have starlink because if without starlink there's oh, zero yeah. connectivity there's no uh, service there <laughs> none um and for a positioning point it's about i don't know what a half hour south of taos new mexico which mm -hmm. we just really loved and, and what kind of brought us here and this is you know another reason why i make van friends through this channel and otherwise is we all were kind of going that same direction. We talked about, um, you guys had a contract in Los Alamos, right? Yep. And I'm headed to Denver to go catch an airplane tomorrow. So we just kind of all, you know, triangulated. And we ended up in Los Alamos. We got to see the um, Bandelier, which was mm -hmm. old Pueblo, ancient Pueblo folks. Um, it was so cool just hanging out together. Um, we had no libation live for a 72 hour period. <laughs> <laughs> And it was just a it was just such a great time. Uh, let's take a few more questions, and then we want to talk about advice because I think you guys, um, me and Britt, have had some really interesting experiences from making your dreams come through, become true, and then researching and shopping for a rig, and then traveling. You've already given some of these. We talked about making money, staying fit, and then the outdoorsy. Some advice on that. But let's take a a few more questions here. Um, Let's see. Mason Mike wants to know, are you two going to Florida Ventopia event? That's in February 2024. We're going. You need to come, uh, Mike. I know. <laughs> come join I the party. The bring joy with you, too. Bring joy. Uh, bring lucky. <laughs> but you better hurry because our, our streets are selling out. Um, uh, maybe Josh could update us on that. But that's the email he sent me. And I need to reply back to you, Josh. I apologize. It's been kind of busy, uh, as always. Um, Josh from Van Life Outfitters, Vantopia. Have you guys considered a custom camper van based on your specific lifestyle? Yes. Yes, I actually plan on, if we had the time, I would have built my own out, to be completely honest. Because I, if anybody on here has watched our videos, I love doing mods. Uh, so for me, it was, that's, that'd be down the road. It'll be mm -hmm. most likely something like an Earth Roamer type rig that I'll build myself. That is so great. Um, let's be sure and get this in. So uh, I love this super secret um, name, YouTube user. It's very secret. <laughs> Gave us uh, uh, a little super chat, so we got to have a little jingle in the jar. Thank you. Uh, we'll appreciate that. Uh, which one? I don't know which hand to pick up. I guess this one. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, appreciate that a great deal. There was a couple up here. Um, Steve wants to know how much easier is managing hot weather between Echo and Travado? So climate, cold, yeah. hot versus uh, insulation. The hmm. Echo is definitely more insulated hmm. uh, for sure. Uh, they're able to do that, obviously, just because they build out, you know, off the cutaway. Um, and the ducted AC is nice and definitely distributes the cool air towards the front more. But it is a little bit bigger. Uh, so you're going to, you got more space to cool. So I haven't noticed much of a difference besides that we like the ducted more just because it balances out the AC uh, and you don't have that cold air kind of just dumping on you in that area. Even if you use the directionals on our Travato, it still gets pretty cold in that back corner. So you got to find that good balance. But with this, uh, it just stays more balanced throughout the whole rig. That's really the only difference. But you, both we stayed cool in. Yeah. So. Do you uh, cover the cab when you park? Yeah, that's so, yeah, a big like thing. That. We still had to buy covers for the front windows. Um, if anybody's never seen what Winnebago gives you to put up in the front windows, it's literally some kind of weird curtain that is not blackout in any <laughs> sense. So 
So yeah. that does not work. And we bought our good blackout covers and they make a huge difference. Yeah, I'm just the weird one that doesn't do any of that. And I pay a price by not having a thermal barrier between the cabs and that. I'm, I'm, I'm might be toying with some ideas there. Um, but anyway, that's a different show. Let's see. Mason Mike wants to know, you guys had some insurance claim issues. Uh, you have a happy ending on that yet or still kind of in the process? It's, it's, it's all, all taken care of now. Yep. Yeah. It came through. Just be patient. Tang Fish wants to know, do you watch the Fit RV channel now that you have an Echo? Yeah, I've watched the Fit RV for now for years. Um, really enjoy the stuff, especially since I'm kind of a, a mod nerd, I guess I would say. Mm -hmm. um, a little unrealistic for the average person because he's got a lot of equipment that we don't have, uh, especially on the road. Garage. I'm jealous of his garage, mm -hmm. but yes, we do. I do watch his stuff and I've got ideas. And they've, um, they've really been instrumental uh, in so many ways. You know, they... Um, a great couple. Have you, ever, have you ever met them in person, like at the Super Show or otherwise? No, nope. no. Um, they're they're really nice folks, and they've done so much for this overall community. Um, they're the ones that kind of came up with the Facebook uh, group for en uh, um, embassy owners, um, Travado owners and wannabes, which is just a massive Wikipedia for everything yeah. Travado. So if you're a Travado wannabe or an owner, you're not signed up for that group. It's kind of invite only, so get invited. Um, now are you probably on both because of your Travado and your Echo because they now the Echo group, right? Yeah, they're yeah. just uh, they, they've just done so much for the community. They don't get called out enough for that. Um, uh, let's see. Looking for, if you can help me with your questions, um, using the three stars, three question marks because we're coming at the top of the arrow. We don't want to miss one. Um, here's Chris and Sandy beyond attention. They have a YouTube channel too, and they're promising more videos. Uh, we had a blast. We're with everyone. waiting for the videos. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is very busy defrosting his fridge. I know it's a big <laughs> block of ice, sir. You have up there. I meant to mention that to you. Um, and Jean says prickly pear cider sounds great. Very good. Uh, it's good. See. It's good. Uh, and that one. Uh oh, roads of life kicking in. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, super sticker. Thank you very much. That, when the jingle, you have to drink if you're playing the drinking game. <laughs> we went easy tonight on everybody. So give our, some of us over the weekend, uh, give our livers a, a break. <laughs> so um, let's see. Uh oh, here's uh, Josh. Thank you for this. So there's 20 tickets left between the Go Small, Live Large, and Embassy Three Street. So Mason Mike, get your butt and make a decision, and you can trade those off. If you really don't want to make the drive, I know it's a huge ass drive because um, I've done it. <laughs> and um, but 20 tickets left. So be it with our group. You'll 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 love us. We'll go easy on you if you haven't been there before. And it's just uh, great. Now, here's Alfred. Now we're in the show. Everybody's chiming in. Oh, Thank you. Alfred. I appreciate it. He is such a great guy. He's done some crazy mods to his uh, Travato, right? He's a really cool cat. Thank you, Alfred. I appreciate that. <laughs> um. Don't harass us. I'm just suggesting defrost your fridge, sir. That's all. <laughs> Wash your van or defrost your fridge. Which is a bigger priority? Fridge. <laughs> yeah. Fridge is kind of important. <laughs> so important. Um, let's see. David wants to know, Neil and Britt, what is the gas mileage on the uh, Echo? Maybe compared to the Travato, because that's kind of an interesting yeah. comparison. Uh, so it's right around 12. Um, and we've been doing a lot of city driving. Uh, when we drove out to Arizona most recently from Oregon, uh, we were getting right around 13 and a half. And I drive it in normal mode. On the transit, you actually have five different modes. Uh, so I could put it in echo mode, and people are reporting around the uh, like 13 and a half to 15 miles per gallon in that mode. But I just, you got to do it every time you get in. So I just always forget. Yeah. It's my, my way. I So it's a little worse than the Travato, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but it's a little bigger, so that kind of makes sense, right? Uh, bigger, heavier, wider, thicker. But we can uh, go up hills a lot better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, sorry, you do that. You <laughs> up, we, like, we might have been having a little bit of fun on that <laughs> on that ride. <laughs> the shock wave created by you going by, I almost, I, I was like, oh my god. Um, yeah, Travados and and with the you know older style of transmission is just way underpowered for any kind of mountain, but you just kind of plug along and that's how I keep my, yep. um, my mileage up by going slow. 
I'm just the old guy getting passed by the semis. It's pretty funny. Uh, let's talk about some advice really fast. We're going to go a few minutes over, so hang in there. But I want to get some of your uh, thoughts on, on research since you've been through four, right? And uh, research on shop and, and shopping. Any any advice? Um, not because we rent a rig out, but I actually would say if you're if you're serious if and you're watching YouTube videos. Uh, Scott's videos, uh, Matt's RV reviews, whatever, you know, just kind of seeing the overviews, go see them in person. And then if you narrow it down to a few, I would recommend maybe renting them for a couple nights. Uh, and it's an expense, but in the scheme of things versus, you know, paying a 150 plus thousand or whatever, uh, you know, if you buy the wrong rig, you, you kind of can't go back on that point. So uh, maybe spend you know, four or 500 bucks for a weekend trip with the rig you're interested in first. Uh, it's just, I feel like it's just a lot easier to lose that money than <laughs> lose a big chunk yeah. of change. Yeah, it's really a, a great point. Um, and my advice on shopping for an RV is, and Justin can uh, attest to this a little bit, is interview your uh, RV dealer because you're making a long-term relationship with them. So I get everything in writing. Any verbal stuff, get it written on the agreement and agree to sign dated that's a mistake we made on some of our current rvs um to meet the service people because they're happy to take your money as soon as you move away off the lot they're like yeah <laughs> see you later so uh that would be some advice i did a, a, a um, pretty serious video on that actually what about travel you guys travel around and i love your your style of work Brittany, because it takes you places a little bit like a harvest host, right? And then you got to discover yep. that place. So maybe just kind of share with the folks, um, any, any tips on travel? You said state parks are lately kind of a hot thing. Yeah. So we're trying to do, uh, we're actually trying to try to do every state park in New Mexico uh, while we're back here. But like you said, Brittany's job takes us somewhere. So we actually, when we're planning out her job assignment, we try to make it so we know that within like four or five hours, there's a lot of stuff we mm -hmm. can see. And for that, so we can see and enjoy it, and also so we can continue making content. But then lately, uh, last summer, you know, wasn't expected, but, you know, we, we've been taking bigger chunks off in between assignments, three, four months, so we can just go and see what we want to see. Uh, and that's the, the kind of the beautiful thing about our situation is we can do that financially and it works out. Uh, and then when it comes to the actual planning, we kind of just like have a bucket list of items where places we want to see and do mm -hmm. so we just look map that out and then now we're taking our time along the way and we look at what harvest hosts are along the way if there's anything else interesting if we see something we now turn around we used to not do that now we'll actually take you know the extra yeah. time and stop and, Brown size, and right? you know see the bar and grill or the weird quirky store mm -hmm. <laughs> so great um we talked about making money maybe just in and you know, connectivity is so important for folks that are working from the road. So just if you can quickly share your Starlink experience, um, what thoughts do you have on Starlink? It saved our bacon this last weekend. It's been great. Because um, I feel yeah. like when we're in towns, we really don't have it set up. Um, because we're on cell service most of the time. It works flawlessly these days. But we've now had several occasions where we're out in the woods absolutely no service and we just set up starlink and boom we're just connected with really we haven't had any bad speeds or anything no um it's it's honestly been a game changer and while it might not be for everybody it's it's amazing for us especially having a business um back in florida where we kind of need to be connected in case our renters need something yeah. um but we can still be out in the woods enjoying nature having campfires with friends and that's amazing yeah, yeah. not having to plan where you want to go because you just know either i'm going to have cell service yeah. or i'm going to have starlink is just a relief uh, i mean we were with you the last few days and we had a rental out and i wasn't worried because i could get calls or text because we had starlink hooked up so mm -hmm. it's just it's a game changer really yeah, it was really. And how many devices, uh, Neil, did you say were connected to your Starlink? We had 16 at one point. <laughs> 16. And the speeds were like 150 down and like 20 or 30 up, wasn't it? I mean, it was just yeah. miraculous, really. I was impressed. Um, maybe a quick tip on outdoorsy. Uh, since you rent your van, uh, that's a whole show in of itself, but maybe just uh, any tip if somebody's thinking to do it, maybe watch some YouTube videos. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. 
I mean, it, it's very, it's honestly very lucrative, the side hustle. Uh, if you are an individual and you don't mind others being in your van, uh, I would actually recommend it if you want to pay your van off within a few years. Uh, it's, I mean, that's how much money you can make. So it is very, very lucrative. Um, you know, just you, you got to be aware people are renting it. There's going to be more wear and tear. There's going to be more mileage. So you have to be willing to make that sacrifice. Uh, but for our circumstance, it's worked out great, even with the, um, the latest insurance uh, going through the insurance process, uh, just because, you know, we had a renter cause some a little bit of damage to it. Uh, overall, it worked out really well. Um, so you have to be willing to know that somebody else is driving it. Those things can happen. But the renters pay for insurance through outdoorsy. Uh, so it's all covered, uh, you know, and, and you're just kind of, I guess, be have to be accepting of that to be, yeah. in order to take the trade off of making chunk of change. Yeah. Same with Airbnb. It's, you know, yeah. it's willing to re relinquish that knowing they'll probably take good care of it because you're going to vet them carefully. But uh, let me just flash this on the screen. So if you're not subscribed to their channel, um, you guys have put in a lot of content lately. And in fact, that story you just shared about your propane situation um, is one of your latest videos. So hit them up on the YouTube, uh, cleverly named Neil Britt. That's pretty awesome. Instagram, <laughs> you guys are over there and Facebook. You're way more savvy than I. Um, I think we've got, let's do your song of the week and then we'll call it a wrap. Yeah, let me do that quick. Um, any final thoughts before we do Song of the Week and then call it a wrap? No, I just had a great time being on here and kind of sharing the story and answering questions. Yeah. Yes, it's so great to have you here. Um, and we do have two more questions uh, beyond attention of Van Can Do. But let's uh, have you. I am not familiar with this um, group at all. So this is uh, let's do Story of the Week. Um, this one's a more modern group because you can tell by the music app. So Matt and Kim, what is up and what is Daylight How why this favorite song? <laughs> uh, so we were actually driving, trying to figure that out this morning. Like what song would be a great one. And that one came to mind just because I was in Oklahoma uh, and my brother actually sent me this song um, and was like, hey, you got to hear this song. It's a really good song. So it's always just kind of stuck in my mind that point in time. I remember it very clearly. But it's just a song kind of like uh, it's just very energetic, uh, kind of a very happy song. So when we're driving, we try to try to keep the the upbeat music going and this is one of the ones this band specifically but this song also that we, we enjoy that's just one of the greatest things i think about traveling is discovering music do you like live music yeah mm -hmm. we, we yeah. have sirius xm so we try to watch or listen when they have the live events and that's really fun when yeah. you're driving yeah i just love listening to um music and if you like live music there's an awesome app called bands in town and you put your uh, location in and you say within 50 miles of me or the live music events okay. in town. Um, so give that a shot. Bands in town. It's really the iPad app is really great because I use all that space. Um, it's really, really great. OK, so two more questions and then we'll say sayonara. So beyond attention wants to know where are the <laughs> cat's favorite sleep spots? You have two cats. So. Uh, up on the dashboard, which currently, wow, he looks ridiculous up there right now. <laughs> He's asleep up on the dashboard. Um, that's probably one of his favorite spots. Yeah. And then Munoz is on the passenger chair. And then at night, it's on Brittany, both of them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. And last question of this episode. What's up Wednesday? Do you normally try avoiding, uh, avoiding toll roads? Yes. Yes. And not really because of the tolls. Yes, they're annoying. But in the last year, we just try to avoid highways as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So we try to actually take more side roads. And that that's is, where you find all yeah. the good stuff that you wouldn't have even gone to if you didn't go that way. And you went on the highway instead. 100%. It's so true. All the good stuff's on the back roads. Um, and by the way, you can drive slower. So yep. just say, there's freeways out here like 75 miles an hour. And I'm... Poking it's along at 60, and it's just, you know, yeah. helps you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, with that, let's say a big uh, thank you to Neil and Britt uh, for joining us tonight, taking time out of your day and sharing your story with us. Uh, you're really a great couple and just a delight to call you friends. And uh, uh, we had so much fun. I'm pretty sure we're going to cross paths before February 2024 for uh, Vantopia. But just a huge shout out, everybody. Thumb up for Neil and Britt tonight. And uh, just thanks again for you two being there. Um, just really 
really appreciate that sharing your story. Thank you for so, having us. Neil and Britt, thank you. Uh, sit right there. Don't leave. And we'll uh, say until we see you next Wednesday, uh, journey on and peace be with you. Uh, we have a tour video coming on Friday morning and then a big uh, vlog style, the first one I've done in like ages, coming on Sunday morning. So don't want to miss either one of those. So until we see you soon, again, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody.